some of my favorites that I've already filmed this twice. But I wanted to do, this is the tutorial that I wanted to do for this little mini album that I just feel is so sweet. Um, and it's pretty simple. So uh, I wanted to do a tutorial. I'm doing it based on the ABCs that I did and the little pizza boxes that I did. But I am using just uh, some random different decorative papers. Um, actually, this one was the last one I did. And I'm using the Butterfly Garden Chalk by uh, Die Cut for the View. I'm just trying to pull sweet, um, simple papers, you know, like flowers and butterflies and things like that. Um, I went and got some craft cardstock, and I really like this Russell Lessman craft cardstock. It's the 8 and a half by 11 size, and my battery is sleeping. Um, and you know what? For this particular mini, mini album, it's perfect because you cut it 4 and a quarter, so you have two 4 and a quarter by 11 sheets. You can make all your pages with this, so I'll be right back and show you how to do it. Okay, so what you're going to need, I am using the corrugated card, the Russell Lessman card, um, for my cover. And that's just my preference at this time. I'm working with that. You could use chipboard, which I would recommend, or something with a little bit of stability. This is, it's paper, but I am backing it also with a piece of, you know, my favorite Manila plastic to give it some more strength. I'm using craft cardstock for the uh, the bones, the, the guts of the, of the mini. And then I'm going to use about two, two 12 by 12 pieces of pattern paper for the inside. Just about two pieces of 12 by 12. That's it. I'm going to use the bind it all for my binding, which this is the three quarter inch um, binding wire. Um, and I've kind of narrowed it down through trial and error um, by making a few of these. I'm going to do two pocket pages. Which one's the one? and six regular pages and then it turns out really nice width wise or depth wise I can't really say so when people fill it with their stuff they have plenty of room um, with the side binding on it so I'm pretty happy about that um, and then we'll embellish the cover too at the end um, so the first thing you want to do is cut your paper your um, eight and a half by eleven uh, cardstock and I'm going to show you that I'm going to cut this uh, Hold on, let me put my camera to the side a little bit. Make sure. And really, what's great about the size that I chose, and I chose a size because it fit um, like a school size picture or an ACT card will fit in a page nicely, match. So, four and a quarter, if you line this up and cut four and a quarter, you're going to have two four and a quarter inch sheets. So your pages are going to be, and you know, I wrote all this down, I'm, I'm not, um, look at, let, let's go over the size of this. The first thing you want to do is cut down your um, covers. I think I wrote it in there. You need two covers. Uh, that would be the corrugated card that I'm using, or if you're using chipboard, three and a half by four and a half. You need two of those. And if you're doing it this way with the corrugated card, you need two pieces at three and a quarter by four and a quarter to kind of back it and just give it that extra stability. So you're going to need two of those for your covers. Um, let me check everything. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so six pages at three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that's why if you cut this in half, you're at four and a quarter, and then you just went three and a quarter, three and a quarter, three and a quarter. You get six pages out of this one piece of um, uh, craft cardstock. So you need six pages. You're going to need two pocket pages. So you take your other piece of um, craft cardstock, cut that at four and a quarter. So you'll have two pieces of four and a quarter again to make your two pocket pages. So four and a quarter by six and a half. This will be the pocket page. And then you're going to take the other piece that you cut off the bottom and cut that into three and one eighth by four and one eighth. That's going to go on the back of your pocket page back here to, pick, to seal it up. And then this little piece, uh, one by three, uh, you'll need one of one each of those for your two pocket pages. So you need three pieces for your pocket pages. I'm going to put all these measurements in the description box. So that's basically it. Then you're going to need tags. Um, those are, we'll get, I'll get 
put them in a minute. But um, so basically, like another one little other half a piece of paper is going to pass. So um, let me show you how to construct the pocket page, and then I'll kind of put everything together. All you need to do is get this floor board and take it and score it at half an inch down both of the long sides. And then four and a quarter down. Oops, that's the wrong way. And that's it. Okay. You're going to take that and you're going to cut. Yeah, you might as well score this little piece too. This is going to be for the bottom to seal the bottom. This basically, I took this design from the Kathy Orta um, envelope mini. She makes a pocket page just like this, really, but she uses this little piece as an extra place to stick a tag. But for this, I'm just going to seal the whole thing up and cover it with paper because I'm really trying to keep it simple. I don't want to do a lot of extra tricks and stuff because it's to celebrate plastic. So you want to trim that off to get it to be like that. So it just makes it neater. We're going to do make little tags on the pocket page as well, cut little half triangles. A triangle at the score line. Oh, I got one. Where's the rest of them? Just a smidge off the end to make your little tag. This is what we're going to glue and create our pocket page. So we got that, we got that, we got that. And that's going to make your pocket page. So I'm using wet glue for this. And you can use whatever your favorite adhesive is. I did make one with my ACG, and I just found that it's too sticky. I, I go over the edge too much, and I get all my pages were sticking together, and it just was a mess. I do better with the wet glue. I actually, I like wet glue. I prefer wet glue over ink, and it just makes a big pile. So um, I just want to fold this again because it seems like it's a little bit off. and I'm grabbing the paper towel. So sometimes this squirts out a little. I'm a bit of a heavy hand. And I go towards the outside of this little tag and just put some glue and fold it up. Come on, that's good. Try to line up those edges. Take my paper towel and give it a push in case any squeezes out. Flip it over. And add glue to this side, the same way. I like to go down the outside edge, just so glue doesn't get on the inside and, and risk sealing up your pocket. And take this other piece, 3 inch by 4 inch, and just cover, kind of center it. That's why I, I like wet glue, too, because you can, um, it has, there's a little fudge time where you can sniff it around a little and get it straight before you actually seal it down. Oh, that's so pretty. This is the third time I'm filming this because I have, I have been struggling for it. So I just wipe the excess off. So that's my pocket page. The last thing you want to do is seal the bottom because if you, I have my, this is open on the bottom. We haven't sealed it. This is sealed because we folded it there. So I'm just going to take my glue again, go around the edges. I feel like it can go in the middle of those sides. It's not really that big of a deal. I don't like to put it on the bottom because I don't want my tag to stick. And just like on the bottom, center it and squeeze. And that's it. So your pocket page is all sealed up. You're gonna, I'm making two of these. You can make as many as you want. You can make your whole book, five of them. You can make five pocket pages and make a book of that. But I'm going to do it um, two pages, pocket page, two pages, pocket page, oops, and then two pages on the back. So it's two pocket, two pocket, two. And then my front and back covers. And that's basically 
the guts of the book. Um, we're going to use decorative paper now, and the way I've been doing it, and I like how this turned out, is I just do my pages one color, and then I do the top of page section another color, just to change it up a little so it's not all the same. Pages, top of page, and then pages. And I think on this one I'm even going to use one other pattern, but it's very similar. It's all from that um, the Butterfly Garden set. So for to cover the, the measurements we will need to cover, I always leave a little smidge of room. So basically just do that. If you know your page is three and a quarter inch, you just take a quarter off. And then, so it's going to be three inches. Three and a quarter, so I'm going to cut my mat at three. This is four and a quarter, so I'm going to cut my mat at four. So three by four. And I've already gone ahead and done a few. This is actually, the brown's going to be my top of page. The butterfly page is going to be my page at three by four. So basically for your page mat, I'm going to use, I think it's ten pieces at uh, three by four, because the pages are three and a quarter by four and a quarter, so the mats are going to be three by four. Um, going to double check just so I don't want to mess up. Yep, see this stuff. I just had it. Um, so what you want to do when you're, when you have a design that you want to go facing you in the right direction, the four inch side is the longest side. So you're going to get, I'll show you what I mean. This, I want this paper this way. It doesn't go this way. Sorry guys. So I'm going to go four four, four. So I have three pieces of four by 12. Then I'm going to turn it and go three. And I need 10 of these. One, two, three, four. You get four mats per thing. So four. Um, I'll go away and come back, but that's how you, you make four mats out of each strip of this. Okay, so I've cut all my mats for my pages. I already pre-cut the mats for the back cover, the front and back cover. If I just switch the paper a tiny bit, and that's going to be the same size as the file folder, three and a quarter by four and a quarter just to cover it, but I still am leaving that smidge of room so you can see the edge of the, um, the border of the half cover. And then I just use a piece of that same paper for the next page so that they match. But all the rest of my pages are going to be this butterfly paper. So I'm going to put a piece, I'm just going to put a piece on each page so I can get loaded up here and know what I'm going for. Um, okay. All right. Then what I did was um, for the top of pages, I'm going to do it brown. And for the top of page, you're going to cut them three inches by two for the bottom and two and a half for the top. And I'm going to put all this in the description box. But it's still three by four for this one. But this one's going to be three going across, but then two and two and a half, and then you stick it in the top. So I'll turn that, and then the rest of my pages are going to be the butterflies. And so I get to that top of page again. And then I did the brown. And again, it's the two by two and a half. And I'll show you how I do that. I just stick it in the top here. Then some more butterflies. And I should get two more and then the back cover. Yep, perfect. So there's 10 pieces that I covered with the butterfly paper. Then I did a back, a back cover and front cover and then the top of page. So I use three different pattern papers. You can do it all one pattern paper, whatever you want. I'll have the measurements. All the pages basically are three by four, except for the top of page. You want to cut that down to two by to a two and a two and a half, like I showed you. So, and then the back cover obviously is bigger. You want to cover the whole piece. So I'm going to start gluing. I'm going to glue most of my book together, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I do the top of pages and then how we bind it. So I'm so I've got 
all these papers are here, and I just wanted to show you how I do this packaging. Uh, I'm going to just take my uh, foam folder and make sure everything's open here before I glue this down. Take my paper, make sure it's going in the right direction, and I just go to the edge. Oh my word, I'm running out. I made a lot of these little gifts lately. And I just rub the glue all over. I'm going to put this on the bottom. Just leaving that like, I guess it's a, an eighth of an inch all the way around. Use my paper towel to wipe off the excess. And then for the top part, I only do like the top and the sides and then a little bit kind of up here. I don't know, this is all you really need. Because you're going to tuck it under the inside the top you go inside and kind of line it up with the edge of the bottom piece and along the top to leave that eighth of an inch like this and there you go so that's how I met the pocket pages so I'll show you what I have here um, I'll have all the measurements in the description box don't forget because remember, this one has to be a little bit bigger because you're covering the, you want to cover up that file folder that we appeared. So you have one, two pages, pocket page. And I also include my pocket, the other thing, I mean my pack, my pouch. So I already cut my match for that. The other thing I did was to make these pouches, I used this little scallop chomper. Actually, it's called cloud. I used the cloud size. See that? And you just chop two corners or two top corners, and it makes it look like a pouch to me. So that's what I did. And then I cut, of course, the match a smidge smaller, just like you do the pages, so that you can see that paper on the outside. So I'll adhere that um, in a second. And have my mat, I mean my match on my pouch. Alright, so you have that. So pocket page, 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 pocket page, 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 page. Alright, so two pages, pocket page, two pages, pocket page, two pages, and that's it. So you can see it's already bulked up a little bit. Um, I'm going to do, oh, I want to do one other thing I want to show you. I do put a little uh, circle in this uh, top pocket. I just do a half circle on the front part of it. And I use a, a one-inch punch, circle punch, and just kind of flip it over, stick this in that slot so I can see the circle, go about halfway down, and just eyeball it to the center. Give it a squeeze. I think it's getting dull. But there, that way it has a little um, place to pull the punch out. And I just glued this other one, so I'm sure it'll be tougher. Um, oh, I also wanted to mention, I didn't uh, edge anything. I didn't ink any of the edges. That's personal preference. You go right ahead. I think it looks lovely. I, d I do it myself. But um, for this particular one, I'm not going to do it because it's for um, my show. And I just want to print them out. And... It's very time consuming, and um, these little books look just fine without it, so I'm just going to go without it for now. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is actually uh, the bind it all, and for this I'm just going to use the six, six uh, range is fine for this. My, my poor battery is beeping again, so I'm going to count. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I want to cut this right in the center of this. And I'm going to use this to thread my pages once I, I'm going to go uh, change my battery and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. And we're going to just do the binding now. Um, I have the Zutter bind it all. Some of you may have a Tint or any other binding machine. Um, 
eyes up as to the thing that I'm using. And you just want to make sure your book is all lined up and everything is going the right way before you start this. Now, okay, me on the safe side. When I, through trial and error, when I um, cut the holes in the cover, it's, it works better when you go from the flat side to the super, like not the corrugated side. And then I just eyeball it. I go by this little um, arrow in the center and make sure that there's the same amount of um, hangover on the ends and then just punch the holes. So, I mean, I'm pretty good with eyeballing so I don't get um, too, you can do two pages at a time. Like I said, just get it centered and then make sure you have the same amount of um, space on both sides. I'm just going to do the pocket page. Centered and then, I don't know, my brain at all is really weird. Um, I've been making these a lot. I've made several, so I mean, I'm definitely putting it for a workout here. I just emptied the all the little um, notches that come out of it, it was filled, so I thought it would help a lot to do that. So get it to go smoother, but it's <laughs> actually not. Maybe I'm just dulling it so much. I don't know how long these machines last, how many punches work you're supposed to get out of it, but um, yeah. Before my battery died, and uh, what you want to do now is take the back cover and flip it around to the front, and then I flip my whole book over. Then you thread these coils through the holes, like so. Bring back your bind it all, and it just comes with this little tool that you can make sure it's. Um, I, I just found one that's three quarters, so. I'm pretty sure, but it might have moved, so that's good. And then you just kind of put your pages in that middle dip of the wire, kind of hold it to the middle. That's what they suggest. I am not a pro at this by any means, but I definitely get it good enough. And then it says to do a smooth push, which I ain't gonna do, but it bounced pretty good. All right, let's do this. See if it looks round. So I'm gonna flip it back over. Good. Actually, it looks pretty round. It's a little wonky, but that's my book. So I have two pages. I can put my um, tags in. Pocket page, two pages. Tags in. And two pages. All right, so that's the construction. All done. Now the next thing I'm going to do is my cover, and I'm basically just kind of going off of this one. I've already pulled some stuff, but I want to talk about how I do this a little bit because I'm a big fan of fabric pass through. A lot of people use their glue guns, and I'm a glue gun girl too, but for certain things. I don't use it for um, I don't use it for fabric anymore. Like when I've done um, office boxes and things in the past, and I've tried to adhere trims and stuff. It pulls right off, like after the glue dries, it'll pull off. So I just don't touch it. I love fabric pass throughs. I've never had an issue with anything coming off. It adheres wonderfully. And most of this cover is fabric. And so that's why I'm kind of, I'm just going to go with this. I'm going to put it all along the edges, up the sides, because this is just a sheer piece of fabric that I'm putting on the back background. I've already cut it to fit kind of just cover the front cover with it. And it gives you a minute to kind of pull it where you want it. So it's not as unforgiving as uh, 
wet room, I mean, um, hot glue, and he goes, hot glue, my daughter's trying to click tonight. <laughs> Which I don't like that either. That's not a weird, I guess. It had a weird edge to it. So then I'm going to put, I, I did, I cut a part out of cork paper. The cork paper, I did my other ones out of a, um, this one was with, you know, <laughs> I have no, no brain anymore. This is the third video I shot of this, by the way. Um, so I'm just going to do a few of the pieces and then I'll go away and come back with it finished and let you see. And I hope this went well. If you guys have any questions, uh, I'd be glad to answer them. Um, you know, I, I, I just think it was cute and it, and for some of my subbies that m may not have seen a, a mini book from me for a while because I, I haven't been doing them for a while. Uh, I just really love this one. I just thought it was so, so cute and fun. When I first started paper crafting, I was addicted to mini albums. Um, Laura Dennison and Kathy Gorda, the, of, of course, uh, beautiful, beautiful books they make, and I just was in love with them and had to make them all. Uh, so now I've kind of just been able to take what I've learned from those and kind of make it into what I want to make it. and. That's kind of what I did here, and especially for a craft book, this is a really cute, sweet gift to give someone. And I think it's, uh, you know, it, it didn't take long to make it, but it's a lot of bang for the for the buck here. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think I want to put this one here. You know, I'm going to go away, come back, and then I'll show you when I'm done. All right, I'm back. I'm all done. And I guess if you guys like this tutorial, I think it was, it's like a cute little a mini album. And they're this tutorial is three times. So I'm hoping this one is a keeper. And I'll get it up there as soon as I can. Um, this is what I came up with. I went a bit crazy with the flower cluster. And I'm tired. I mean, I like this one for the simplicity. It's just simple. There's a couple little flowers. <coughs> I think I like making my heart bigger too. <coughs> this is like a little bit hard because I think I had so much more room. Um, but someone will like it. You know, someone will like it. I, I hadn't used a, a gold screw and I went with a gold button this time. So I changed it and um, I have six of them so far. So I think I'll make a couple more. I mean, they're really quick as you could tell. So I hope you like it and thank you for watching.